Hey, everyone, this is Three Questions with Chris Christina Capretta. I got so much to, to actually pronounce properly. You got, you got too excited. <laughs> I, got, I got too excited. So I like, I'm making sure I got your name right, because Christina Capretta. Why am I having, the Capretta was the, the hard part. I'm having problems with the Christina part. Christina. She is the Director of Marketing and Community Relations at Berea. Mm -hmm. I got, I'm like so worried about messing this up. Uh, Berea City School District, which is right outside of Cleveland. You are yes. a little bit of a LeBron James fan. Do you like LeBron James? Are we doing this? Absolutely. I still right. love him. Yeah. He's, you know, like he's loved in uh, Cleveland, even though he left after he won, but he did what he said he was going to do. He won you a title. So um, we're actually going to talk about your role in communications, what you do for the school district. And one of the things that I'm really fascinated by is how your role actually improves learning in schools. Cause I think a lot of people think it's just about branding and getting our message out, but if it doesn't actually improve learning, I don't know um, that it's, you know, that it helps in education. So I think that's a really important aspect, but I'm going to wait for that. So I got three questions, but I'm going to jump in to a, a surprise question. <laughs> Christina, are you excited about this? I'm so like, excited. Let's okay. see. Well, this. you kind of brought it up. Oh my I'm gosh. Like, yeah. So I'm like, what is this? I'm like, don't tell me. I want to know on the podcast. <laughs> you talked about before we even got into this about how I'm basically not going to have a podcast anymore because AI is going to do it for me. So this could be my last one. I might just, after this, I mean, like, what are you talking about with this AI thing? Well, how is this actually change? Like what, what's this thing that you were talking about before we even got on the podcast? Okay. So I'm super big into AI and just learning as much as I can as possible just to improve my workflow. Right. Um, so there is this Google product that I just used yesterday and today called Notebook LM. Mm -hmm. And you can upload documents. So I uploaded our state report card. I uploaded our communication that we sent out about it. And, and you can even work with it and have it ask other questions, other important things based on your documents. It like prompts you for right. like what other questions you might want. And then you literally hit a button that says generate audio and then you get like a 10 minute podcast between like two ai voices and right. it's actually pretty good so would it be our voices or someone no else? no it's just two okay. right now like it's very very basic right now like english is the only language option it's just a male and a female and it's pretty darn good like and it doesn't sound like i sent it to a colleague and she thought it was my voice and it wasn't my voice at all Okay, so what what's the product again? Just in case people are listening. Notebook LM. Okay, so Notebook LM. Uh, you just got a free advertisement, but you can there you go. <laughs> throw some you can throw some money that Google money our way for the podcast. Right, so please. Let's go. Let's go. Well, not your way, our way. <laughs> right. No, don't take it all. Right. I've never heard of it. We can share. Ago. We can yeah, share. So I'm not. I'm not actually curious. So if you are listening uh, on the podcast, if you're pop over to YouTube. Here's a question for you to put in the comments. How would you actually use something like that in your classroom? So like already, already your role, there's something there. Cause I, there's tons of ways I could actually think about how students could use that in the classroom. So I'd love people to share that in the comments. So Christina already justifying my first question. Okay. So, um, we actually connected, um, you, you not only are in, you are actually the, what, what's your role for Ohio? You have like a role in Ohio, right? So there is the National School Public Relations Association, and there are state chapters. So yes, I'm in Ohio. So I am the current president-elect of the Ohio School Public Relations Association. All right. And I've been to Ohio a lot, so I'm going to give a little, a little shout out. Were you expecting that? You didn't know that was coming, did you? No, I love it. That was not AI. That was my thing. That was you. That was straight up me. That wasn't generated. That was just there. <laughs> So we have a lot of similarities. We have a lot of, you know, same, same, even though we're from different countries who have similar upbringings, you know, pair, you know, uh, child of immigrant parents, you know, and you told your dad is like Michael Scott from the office. So I'll say that for another podcast. So I, I did, I love that story, but so I know that right now, and we just kind of just do three questions. There's a lot of stuff, you know, going on about education, people feeling, you know, under, <laughs> underappreciated is like, probably, you know, the least of our concerns of anything. Right. And so there's some negative stuff here. How do you actually in your role, you know, for Berea, maybe at the, at the state level, how do you actually 
deal with some of those negative things that, you know, are posted on social media, posted, you know, online. Cause basically, um, everyone has a voice now are we using that in positive ways, but then how do you actually leverage some of those things to find some opportunity there too? Right. Cause I know sometimes we, we had some negative things when I did, no, I didn't do your role, but I had aspects of your role. But we also saw some opportunity to kind of connect with families because we're like, nah, that's actually <laughs> what you're saying is totally, I don't know where you're getting that information from. So what are some of the negatives that you have to deal with? And actually, how do you actually address them to kind of benefit your school district? So a lot of people in my role in school PR, we um, deal with those Facebook community groups <laughs> where anyone and everything is just put in there. Like we'll send a communication, it gets screenshot, it gets critiqued, um, misinformation, rumors. So right. I am in all of those groups. I don't <laughs> comment as myself. I Until don't today. comment as- Until they find out today. <laughs> right. Um, I don't comment as the district. So we kind of, it's almost like we want people to come to us and tell us about problems, but for whatever reason, they take it to social media. So we kind of see the chatter. We see the misinformation yeah. and we kind of use it to our advantage and um, either clear things up through the district or we see some people are kind of confused about something. We will take that information and then like incorporate it into our next newsletter. So it's really just almost seeing what's on the mind of our community and just kind of like being proactive about it where they are in those community groups and kind of being reactive to things that they're seeing. So we just want to, you know, kind of just do what we can on our end. And almost, it's almost like we're spying on conversations, <laughs> but uh, for real, Right. Um, but okay. it's important for us to know those things. And if the, when there is misinformation out there, we want to get ahead of it. And then we also have, I mean, there's some really great parents out there that will step in and yeah. will kind of clear up things. And, you know, maybe I'm giving away my secrets, but, you know, I can text a mom or two and be like, hey, do you mind posting something you for me? Your secrets. <laughs> we won't go in as and post as a district and I won't post as myself. Absolutely not. Well, you know, as a, as, as a educational administrator, one of the things I used to say to people is I cannot fix problems. I don't know exist. So Correct. That, yeah. that is a really important aspect. And you know, I, I don't want to give credit to this. Sometimes you might actually find out stuff. You're like, Oh, is that happening? Like maybe yeah. you know, there, there's sometimes that maybe there is some truth in what's being shared or something you might have addressed. And I'm not saying for your district in particular, but anywhere, right? Sometimes I think it's really important to say like, Hey, is this actually a thing? Like, let's kind of look into this, but it is so one of the things that I find really fascinating. And I, I would love your opinion on this. Um, there is a book that is just blowing up everywhere. It's called the anxious generation by Jonathan Haidt. It's all over the place. And a lot of it is like kids shouldn't be using social media, kids shouldn't be on their phones. And a lot of schools are using that book to actually get devices out of schools kids shouldn't be using this stuff at all. And I guess one of my arguments about this is like, I'm not, I'm never like, Hey, we should get kids on their phones all day. That's not, that's not my argument at all. My concern sometimes is I don't know as a, adults, we know what we're doing. And so how do we, you know, like there's sometimes some stuff that I'm seeing that we're not really having great conversations in these spaces as adults, but then we're also judging the kids. So like, I remember actually, it's funny, I posted something on one of Jonathan Heights and I just got blasted for just not agreeing. Not, I didn't say anything personal, nothing. I'm like, I don't, I'm struggling with this. And then it was like, you know, very personal attacks, sh sharing different things. How do we actually, you know, work with some of the adults to think about how they're posting and how they're sharing, you know, when we're not even teaching our kids right now, like, do you have any thoughts on that? I'm like curious what, what do you think about that? Well, just with the whole social media, like it is such a struggle for me because there's so much good, but then there's so much bad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and especially with the adults, I think like there's such a huge focus right now is for parents to like know what their kids are doing on social media. Like I have a really good parenting tip for social media. So sure. um, my, I have two boys, they are 16 and 14. They do, they didn't get cell phones. So they were in seventh grade. So this is me <laughs> thinking that I know everything as the adult. Right. 
Right. Um, so they are not on social media. Um, my younger child was on social media for a day. How do I know this? I have Snapchat on my phone. So if you're a parent out there, download Snapchat on your phone, even if you think you're not going to use it, link it to your contacts. So I was actually on my oh. treadmill one day. I got an alert on my watch that said, your contact Ben is now on Snapchat. I'm like, <laughs> my contact Ben, that is my oh. child. No, no, he is not on Snapchat. So got off the treadmill, went right upstairs. Ben, do you create a Snapchat account? Like it was a whole big thing. Like he ended up, because you have to have a verification code, right. like through your cell phone to create an account, like whatever. He did it sneaky. He did it through his friend, set up a whole account, deleted it immediately. I'm like, no, this is not happening. So parents out there, download Snapchat, connect your contacts. And if your kid, and if you don't want your kid on Snapchat and your kid does sign up on Snapchat, you'll get an alert. So that is my parenting tip. I I, I had no idea. <laughs> I don't, I actually just like, I don't, I'm, I, you know, I think I signed up for Snapchat years ago. I'm like, I'm good. I, I don't use it. I, it's, yeah, I, like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, like I, I'm, I'm not a big advocate of like do everything that's like trendy in the moment or like that. Just kind of like, Hey, let's kind of do a few things really, really well. I do want to kind of, kind of comment on something you said. And it's like, I'm like wondering your thoughts on this. So you said your own, now this is going to turn into a parenting conversation, mm -hmm. your own two kids. You're like, you have no social media. So I bet as a school district, you Google candidates that apply for jobs. Is that fair to say? I mean, probably does not. my, I mean, it probably does happen. Oh, yeah, I right. will not confirm or deny. Right. Right. But if check on the Facebook parent groups, you'll see if a surprise someone you don't know, that could be you. Who knows who it is, right? So here, here's here's the thing that I've been kind of advocating for. We know that colleges are looking at what students are doing on social media. We know that um, jobs are doing this. We know, honestly, that your boys, you're probably Googling the kids are hanging around, right? I would do that. And like my, I always make this, joke it's kind of true my mom would old school google she would phone everybody same process just totally different medium right so one of the things that i really want to teach kids we know you're they're going to get googled instead of saying like hey we don't want them to have anything when they're searched we want people to find great stuff because then it puts them in a a a, a, a good opportunity a good position how do you kind of kind of square that circle a little bit because like if we don't teach our students to do this, they might have nothing. And that might be the equivalent of having a blank resume in 2024. I think just for me, just from my perspective, like just because of my role in the district and the information that I'm privy to, mm -hmm. like that's kind of where I lean for my own kids. Like, I don't, I don't want them to be in that world. I don't want them to be like, you know, part of the social media where kids are sending like inappropriate things to each other. Like, I don't, I just don't want them caught up in that. So for me, like, that's just what I want for my own kids. And, right. uh, and I think as a school communicator, it's important for us to like, tell our parents, like really be on top of what your kids are right. doing. You right. know, there's a whole, it's, it's, it's across the country. It's nationwide right now where there's just rampant social media threats. And we just have to take every single threat seriously. And those, that time and resources that we are, you know, working with police departments, mm -hmm. investigating those threats, that's taking away from our real job in educating children. Okay. Well, yeah. I, and so the, one of the stories I share and it's like, you know, it's, and I, cause there's good and bad with all this stuff. Right. And I always try to like, say like, Hey, let's influence the good. Um, there's a student I connected with years ago who applied for, um, USC, but didn't get in, uh, cause her grades not good enough. And so they Googled her and said, yeah, we'd love to have you. And so like, it's like, how are we leveraging some of this stuff too? Right. Like, and if in all honesty, how did we connect you? probably found me on social media. Right. So I think mm -hmm. like we, you know, so I, I'm always kind of back and forth and I think you and I might have, I don't know if we have different perspectives, but I think the important thing is that we're both advocating. We need to be in the gray as parents, as educators, yeah. it's, it, there's no, like it's an either or solution. So all that being said, um, one of the questions, and we, we, we talked about these questions before too, because I really wanted to, I didn't want to put you on the spot, 
um, because this is a really big one. And I don't know um, in every role people can add to this. I think it's really important if you work in education, how does your role in particular doing communications, how does it actually improve learning in schools? Because a lot of times I hear about branding and I'm just, you can tell by the way I said branding and I said it that totally, if you're listening, you can hear I said it sarcastically. Um, I feel like it's kind of like, what are you selling, right? Because if a kid goes home and says school sucks, it doesn't matter what they, well, but on social media, so it was good, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Well, my kid said it sucks. So my thing is like, how did, like we have to kind of always make that connection. So how does your role in particular improve learning in schools? I'm going to keep going back to my own kids. Cause like, same thing, like they will come home from school. Like, instead of saying like, how was your day and getting a one word answer, like good, mm -hmm. fine. I asked them to tell me, <laughs> Brandy. <laughs> um, you know, I instead asked them, like, tell me something good that happened today. So in my role, like, that is what I focus on, like telling the story of our district, telling the good things that are happening, like opening the door to our classrooms, putting that out there, whether it's in our newsletter or social media or photos or creating videos. Um, you know, one great example is I was at our middle school for something totally else I went there for. Um, it was after school. I was there with my superintendent. We heard guitars. Oh, it was guitar club. So went in there, took a couple pictures, you know, posted like, hey, here's our guitar club meeting at our middle school, whatever I wrote. A parent saw it and goes, oh my gosh, I want my kid to join that. So that right there, like, yeah. that's what we want people to see. We want our families to have a view inside of our schools behind the walls, um, see opportunities and see the different things that like they want for their children. Um, another great example is we um, integrated unified sports in our school district last year. Um, so where our kids with special needs, they were on teams, um, sports teams. And, you know, we shared photos and pictures of that. And there was one student I posted a picture of and the parent on social media was just like, oh my gosh, like, look mm. at my Sophia. Like we're giving parents a view to their sides of their children. They may not see otherwise. I love that. You know, and that's, that, that's something I often talk about. And I think it is important is that instead of coming home and say, what'd you learn today? Nothing. Right. It's like, oh, I saw yeah. that. And so it right. changed a lot of communication. I think one of the things too, that's a little bit underrated in this space is when I became a principal, my former principal, she said to me, you will become so much better of a teacher now that you're principal, because you have the access to the best professional learning ever. You get to see other teachers teach. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really, really powerful. But then as I was in the role, I'm like, well, it doesn't really matter if I'm a better teacher because I'm not teaching anymore. So how do I actually use my flexibility to go from classroom to classroom to improve teaching in the schools? And it would be like conversations. So, so, so sometimes it's actually just making visible across the hallway what's going on. That sometimes it's like starting different conversations at, you know, at, at school, at, you know, between staff members, being able to see some of the great things that are happening across the hallway because we often wait six weeks to share it in our staff time, whatever. But it's like, hey, we can make this immediate. And it's like, hey, I saw that was posted, you know, at our, in our school district. Tell me more about that, right? So I think it can improve learning, not just, you know, the conversations at home, but conversations, you know, among staff. So I think that's a really important aspect. All right, so last question of advice or question here. And, you know, your job is obviously, you know, you deal with some of the, really crappy stuff, obviously. Um, how could like a teacher or a principal or a support staff member, how could they help you in your role? So if someone's listening to this, you know, and it's like, how can they help you become successful so you can, you know, shine the spotlight, help them, you know, you become better at what they do. So two part. Okay. Number one, is I like my best piece of advice, like when we welcome our new teachers every year, um, we go around with all the administrators, you know, we introduce ourselves um, and we all give a piece of advice. And my piece of advice is never underestimate the impact you can make. So that right there, like even if you think like what you're doing in your classroom, like the day to day stuff, like isn't that like social media worthy or newsworthy right. or whatnot, like it truly, truly is. Um, so I would say just take the time 
to either like reach out to me or even like take a photo. Like it doesn't even have to be anything special. You know, it could be just like kids working on a lesson or just kids mm -hmm. in the classroom. Like the day-to-day -day stuff is actually the stuff that people love to see the most. Like it doesn't have to be a special project. It doesn't have to be anything notable. Like just the day-to-day, -day. like you in your classroom, like with those like aha moments with your students, like that's, that's what I want to showcase. That's what I want to let families know um, that's happening in our schools. That's the kind of things like I want to be able to post on social media and create those discussions at the dinner table for families. Like those something good that happened today. Like I it doesn't have to be huge. You know, the little things. There's a really great video. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Um, and I've shared it and it totally backs up what you're saying. It's by, I think, I think, and I couldn't say Christina, so I'm probably screwing this one up. It's, I think it's Derek Sivers and I'll, I'll link it down below. It is called obvious to you, amazing to others. And a lot of times, you know, as Christina was sharing some of the stuff that we take for granted that we just do every single day, someone mm -hmm. else like, I never thought of that. I never had that. And that video is such a good, it really helped some people to kind of realize that they're doing something really, really powerful, even though it's what they just sing, simply do every single day, but to someone else they had no clue. So I, I love that because we often take for granted. It's just kind of what we do. And, you know, we have to take granted, you know, roles like yours. And I know that you can really amplify and, you know, bring communities together, help elevate the learning in your classroom. I really appreciate your time. I am so sorry that I got Capret. Now I'm saying Capretta wrong. And I couldn't say Christina. It's okay. <laughs> All right. So obviously this is why I'm not in communications because I can say, can't obviously, so <laughs> but Hey, make sure you connect with Christina, all of her social media, other than her secret Facebook <laughs> is linked down below. We won't talk about the secret Facebook. Uh, but other than that, you can connect with Christina. I, I loved having you on and I love, I can't wait to connect with you more. I'm going to learn more about your dad, the, the Italian Michael Scott, which is like my favorite story ever. Thanks so much for listening. Christina, thanks for your time.